In this tutorial, we're going to take the vectors that we created in the previous drawing tutorial, where we organised the vectors under particular layers, so that we could take advantage of the vector selection option found within the advanced options of the toolpath in the software. And once machined, we should end up with something that looks like this, as you can see on screen. And in the software, once we've created the toolpath, we'll end up with a preview that looks like this. So, if you missed this tutorial where we created those vectors, don't worry, I have linked that in the related video section of the tutorial browser. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to File and Close, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open an existing file. So I'm just going to navigate my way through the Tutorials folders, and I'm going to go to the Child Nameplex Files folder, and I'm going to select the Child's Nameplex CRV file, and just press Open, like so. And then we'll be presented with all the vectors that we created. Now before we begin, I'm just going to recap with all the layers and the vectors that we created. So I'm just going to go up to the top here and just click on the Layers drop down here. And I'm just going to undraw all of the vectors. So we can go through one at a time to see all the vectors that we have. So if I click on this ball icon here, we'll be presented with all the vectors that we created for the cutout pass. Then if I click on the V-Profile layer and undraw the cutout, you'll just see the vectors that we're going to use for the V-Profile. Then we've got the tabs. So the tabs is where we're basically going to use that uh, rectangle there to pocket down the material for the tabs. And the last layer that we've got in our selection is the slots layer. And that contains basically the vectors we're going to use to slot the name plaque into our stand. So let's go over to the toolpaths tab, we just click this icon here and the first thing that we must do before creating any toolpaths is go through the material setup. So we're just going to go and select the set button here and just check over all of our parameters. So we're okay with the thickness and we're going to have our toolpaths created from the lower left, x, y, date and position. We're going to be off the material surface, the zero position and the rapid Z gaps look fine and the home start position looks okay. I may just want to reduce this maybe to just slightly above the material and then click OK like so. So the first toolpath that we're going to create is our V profile toolpath. Now that is going to be the toolpath that gives us the illusion that the letters are stacked upon one on top of the other. And to do this we're going to use the profile toolpath. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the profile toolpath here from the toolpath operations and we're going to start from the top of the material and we're going to cut down to 0.1 of an inch. Now for this we need to make sure that the show advanced toolpath options is checked as we need to utilize the vector selection which is at the bottom here. So once we've got that checked we can go ahead and select our tool. So I'm going to go ahead into the tool database and I'm going to select myself a half inch 90 degree V-bit tool. So going to make sure all the parameters are OK and then press OK. And then we can get to choose how we're going to machine our vectors. So at the moment we got it selected on outside. Now to get the effect where we're going to be using the V-bit tool, we want to trace the vectors that we've created. So we want to make sure we've got the machine vectors selected to the on option here. So once we've done that, we can scroll down and we can go to the vector selection option, which you'll find here. So just press the selector button and that will then open up the vector selector window. Now the vector selector is useful in many ways. For instance, when you have overlapping vectors in the 2D view, we can select them easily using the vector selector because of the way we've organized our vectors onto different layers. And this tool gives us the ability to select them in this way. We can also use this tool to always select particular vectors and associate those vectors with this toolpath. So if we ever made changes to the vectors or we even change the vectors to a completely different name, all we would have to do is recalculate the toolpath and it would automatically look for all the vectors that match the criteria of the vectors that we're about to choose using the filters here. So when we're going to go select our vectors, what we're going to do is we simply just start checking whether we want to uh, look for open and close vectors. So I'm just going to go for all because I want to search for all vectors on the particular layers. Now we do have further options which do go into basically looking for circular vectors but we're not going to need that in this particular instance. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the right hand side of this form and then choose which layers I'm looking for vectors on. So at the moment it's currently highlighting vectors found on the cutout layer. So I'm just going to uncheck that and I'm just going to check the V-profile layer and then what we need to do then is we can also choose whether we want to associate 
all these filters with the toolpath. So as we just mentioned, if we do plan on using this as a template for future purposes, we can create our own vectors with a different name and just simply keep this toolpath and the layer name. As long as we create those vectors on the profile layer, this will this toolpath, all it would need doing is recalculating and it will output the toolpath. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this with it checked as associate with the toolpath and I'm just going to click close like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name. So I'm just going to call this V profile. So I'm just going to add a V in front of the profile name and then I'm just going to go ahead and click calculate like so. So this will then bring us into the preview toolpath form and I can go ahead and just preview that toolpath to see what that looks like in the simulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then add a toolpath color. So I'm just going to go for a dark red like so and you can see that effect nicely in the 3D preview like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and click close now and I'm just going to go back into the 2D view and the next lot of toolpaths I'm going to create is the pockets for the tabs that are going to basically hold the name plaque in the stand. So let's go ahead I'm just going to deselect all the vectors in the white space like so and then I'm going to go into the pocket toolpath. Now we know that the thickness of the material is 0.625 of an inch which is an eighth inch bigger than the actual slots that these tabs are going into which is why we're actually going to pocket down over the tabs just to remove the majority of that material to get the right thickness for those tabs to slot into this base. So we're going to change the cut depth to an eighth of an inch like so and we're going to use a 3 16th inch end mill. So I'm just going to go into the tool database and just select that. Now when creating these vectors we did have a 3 16th inch end mill in mind to actually do the cutouts. So I'm going to go ahead and select my 3 16th inch end mill. If you need to create one uh, you can simply just use the new or copy buttons. If you want more information there is the tool database guide in the related video section. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK like so and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is choose my operation for clearing out this area. So I'm just going to choose just the offset uh, method Then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to use the vector selection again. So I'm just going to press the selector button and this time again I'm just going to keep the open and close uh, vectors all selected and I'm just going to change the layer that we're going to look for vectors on. So I'm just going to change this to tabs and you'll see that now if I just move this out of the way that those rectangles which we're going to pocket down an eighth of an inch are now selected. Associate with toolpath and close and just call this pocket tabs like so and calculate and this will then again bring us back into the preview toolpath form hit preview and you'll see exactly what that is going to do for us there. So we can move on now it's going to close the preview toolpath form and go back into the 2D view. As now what I would like to do is now pocket out the actual slots the name plaque is going to sit inside. So again we're going to be using a 3 16th inch end mill for this. So I'm just going to go deselect all the vectors, go back into the pocket toolpath. And this time we want to pocket down 3 8 of an inch. Now that is the actual depth of these tabs. Now this is this measurement was taken from when we actually created these vectors when we did it in the previous tutorial. So I'm just going to type in here 0.375 like so. Now we've still got the 3 16th inch end mill selected so I don't need to go into the tool database to reselect that. I'm going to use the same offset strategy but this time we're going to add in a negative pocket allowance to slightly overcut the slot for a slightly better fit when we come to fit the actual finished part of the machine into the stand. Now this pocket allowance will vary depending on the materials that we're using and the accuracy of the measurement of the tool we have in the tool database that we've selected to use. So in this instance I'm going to add a very small offset of 0.01 of an inch so for you guys that are using the metric system that's uh, about a quarter of a millimeter and just make that a negative pocket allowance so that then it will cut outside of the vector boundary that we're going to select so once we've done that we're just going to go into the vector, vector selection by pressing the selector button here and again we're going to keep the open and close vectors selected and just change the layer 
that we're looking for. So we're just going to turn that on to the slots layer like so. And then press close and just call this pocket slots like so. And then press calculate. And then preview. Now if we go into the 2D view, we can utilize an option to preview our toolpath in the 2D view. So how we do this is we first of all select the toolpath by checking one of the checkboxes. So I'm just going to check the pocket slots and straight away you'll see that we now get uh, a preview of the toolpath's path it's going to take when it comes to machining and also the direction of cut, like so. Now what we can do is we can toggle between that view and also a solid preview so we can actually see the width of the tool in action. So if we just toggle this button here, it says to toggle toolpath uh, 2D drawing style, so if I just click that you will now get the solid preview. Now if we zoom in, this basically, this shaded area is all the area that is going to be machined away and you can see that we are going to be cutting outside of that vector boundary because we specified that pocket allowance of 0 0.01. So that's just another way that we can preview our toolpath. So I'm just going to press F on the keyboard to zoom to fit. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is close the preview toolpath form and then create our cutout path for all of this. So with all the vectors deselected, I'm just going to go into the profile toolpath and I'm going to cut the full depth, so I'm just going to press Z in the cut depth and the equals key which will then bring up the uh, material thickness for us and I'm going to go into the tool database and select our 3 16th inch end mill to do the cutout pass for us. Once I've done that, just press OK and I'm going to make sure that we change this to cutting outside of the vectors as we want to cut it out and just scroll down and we do actually want to add tabs to this toolpath but we can't do that yet until we've selected some vectors so I'm going to scroll down and go into the vector selection, like so. Just change this to the cutout layer and then press close. And now we've got some vectors which we can attach some tabs to. So now I can go ahead and check this checkbox. I'm just going to specify a length of 0.2 of an inch and a thickness of 0.15. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and actually place those tabs on the vectors manually by pressing the edit tabs option there. So then what I can do is if I put my mouse on the screen I've now got this icon and this when there's a tick that means I can actually place a tab there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about five tabs to the top surface or well, the actual name plaque itself. So three, four and about five there. And then I'm going to add around about four to the actual stand itself, like so. Now what I need to do is press close and then give this a name. So I'm just going to call this profile cutout, like so. I'm not going to worry about adding ramps to this as I'm not planning on cutting it out. And I'm just going to press calculate, like so. And then we can go ahead and preview. So I'm just going to uncheck the pocket slots and just preview the selected toolpath, like so. And you see that we now have a cutout and you'll notice that we've now got the tabs around the outside of our name plaque. Now there is one thing if you notice, there is in the centre of that O there, we do have a loose bit of material. Now this could be a little dangerous when we're machining, dependent on obviously if we have not got any other forms of hold down for this, that piece of uh, wood is likely to go flying off in another direction or it might get trapped in that space and even damage the tool itself as well. So it's potentially got some hazard there. So it's, this is why it's another good reason to send you straight to the preview toolpath form and it's good to preview that toolpath before we go ahead and save out anything because we can spot these potential hazards before we get to the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into the profile cutout pass by double clicking on the toolpath name and then go to edit tabs and just add in to to that center of the O and then press close and calculate and now if we reset the preview we can preview all the toolpaths and you'll see that we've got those tabs holding that bit of material in for us. So all that's left to do now would be to save out those actual toolpaths so we can actually close out the preview toolpath form and we'd start with the V profile and we just go to save toolpath now obviously we'd go ahead, find our 
post processor, so I'm just going to use a standard G code inch there, and we just select the toolpath and press save. Save that in the location of our choice. Now there is one thing that we could do, because we do know that all these use the same tool, the 3 16th inch M mill, we can actually output all these at the same time. By utilizing this option here, it says output all visible toolpaths to one file. So we could just check that, and then we can actually select all the toolpaths that we wish to output using the one tool. Now this does save time, as we don't actually have to actually load in each individual toolpath. We can just load in one, as long as the, we've got the order correct. Now the order is basically from top to bottom, the bottom being the last toolpath, so obviously we want to cut out the toolpath last and the, the tabs and slots first, which is the order that they are in there. But if we wanted to change those, obviously we can just maneuver these around using the arrows here, like so. And then what we do is to simply press the save toolpath, give that a name, like so you'd put combined toolpath of tabs, slots and cutout, save that, and then you can go and run that on your machine as one toolpath. And with that concludes this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.